If you're in the cannabis industry, you need to know how strong your product is. Potency matters for your customers, for consistency, and sometimes for staying within legal limits. But not all testing methods work the same way. The way you test affects the numbers you get and what those numbers actually mean. Most cannabis testing is done using either gas chromatography, or GC, or liquid chromatography, LC. On paper, they're both used to measure THC and CBD levels, but the way they get to that data is completely different. GC uses heat to break the sample down into a gas before analysis. LC doesn't. It keeps everything in liquid form. And that one difference changes what the test actually detects and how you need to interpret those results. A lot of people assume the results are interchangeable, but they're not. And that can lead to confusion if you don't know what you're looking at. In this video, we're going to break down the difference between GC and LC testing for THC and CBD, what each method does, and why that matters. We'll cover how GC and LC actually work, what that means for THC and CBD results, why GC might be the better choice depending on what you're testing for, and what to watch for when you're reading the potency data. If you find this kind of breakdown useful, hit subscribe. We've got more videos coming on cannabis testing and how to make sense of the data behind your product. But let's start with what GC and LC actually are doing. Liquid chromatography, LC, separates and measures compounds while they're still in liquid form. There's no heat involved, and that matters because cannabinoids exist in two forms, acidic and neutral. In the plant, most of the THC and CBD are in its acidic form, THCA and CBDA. These are not psychoactive. They only become active when they're decarboxylated which usually happens through heat, smoking, vaping, or cooking. Because LC doesn't use heat, it detects both forms. So you'll get separate values for THCA and THC, or CBDA and CBD. This can be useful when you're formulating products where the acidic forms are relevant, like raw extracts or topicals, where decarboxylation doesn't happen. Gas chromatography, GC, works differently. The sample is heated to convert it into a gas before analysis. That heat step triggers decarboxylation and THCA becomes THC, CBDA becomes CBD, and that means GC doesn't measure the acidic forms. It shows you the total amount active, neutral cannabinoids, the stuff people actually absorb when they consume the product. So if you test the same sample using both methods, the numbers won't match. LC gives you a split between acid and neutral forms. GC gives you a single value that reflects the final active content. So how does this difference actually show up in your lab results? With LC, you'll usually see separate values for the acidic and neutral forms. For example, THCA and THC listed as two distinct numbers. To work out total THC, labs apply a formula that adjusts for the conversion between THCA and THC. And that's because THCA is heavier, it loses a carbon dioxide group during decarboxylation, so you can't just add those numbers together. It's accurate, but it's also one step removed from what the customer experiences. You're looking at what's in the raw plant, not the final active amount after heat is applied. With GC, that step's already built in. Because the sample is heated as part of the analysis, the THCA has already converted into THC by the time it's measured. You get one clean value, the active THC content. And the same goes for the CBD. This mirrors what happens when someone actually uses the product, smoking, vaping, baking, whatever the method. The cannabinoids are activated by heat. GC reflects that process. It gives you the numbers that match real world use. It's worth noting that this applies mainly to products that are heated when used, like flour, vapes, or edibles. For things like tinctures, oils, or CBD drinks, decarboxylation usually happens during processing. So by the time it reaches the consumer, the cannabinoids are already in their active form. In those cases, GC still gives you a direct readout of the active content. LC can still be used, but again, you'll need to do the math to get the final potency value. So with all that in mind, why would you choose GC over LC? 
If your main goal is to understand the strength of your product as it's actually used, meaning how much active THC or CBD is available after decarboxylation, GC gives you that answer directly. There's no need to estimate or run conversion formulas. You get one value that reflects the total active cannabinoid content. This makes GC especially useful for flour, free rolls, and any product designed to be smoked or vaped. It's also useful for extracts and oils that have already been decarboxylated during processing. In those cases, GC gives you a fast, direct reading of what's active and available to the body. It's also simpler to interpret. You don't have to explain to someone how to read acid versus neutral forms or worry whether the labs use the right conversion factor. The number you see is the number your customers will feel. And that's why a lot of smaller labs and in-house setups use GC. It's straightforward, reliable, and well-suited for routine potency testing. For that kind of work, a compact instrument like the Elusha 200 series GC fits well. It's designed for routine cannabinoid testing, accurate on THC and CBD, and doesn't require a complex setup or a full-scale lab environment. Of course, GC isn't always the right choice. It depends on what kind of data you're looking for. GC gives you the total active THC and CBD, but it doesn't show the acidic forms. Once the sample is heated, THCA becomes THC, CBDA becomes CBD, and those original acid forms are gone from the data. So if you need to measure THCA or CBDA specifically, for example, if you're working on a product that uses raw or unheated material, or if your local regulations require you to report both acid and neutral values, then LC might be the better option. This is especially relevant for some medical or therapeutic products where THCA or CBDA are being used in their original form. It's also important for producers exporting to markets where legal definitions of THC include the acid form or where specific limits apply to THCA content. In those cases, LC gives you the full breakdown. You can see exactly how much of each form is present and calculate total potency using standard formulas. But if your priority is understanding how the product performs once it's been heated, which is the case for most flour, vapes, and decarboxylated oils, GC gives you the result that lines up with the real experience. It's about matching the method to the question you're trying to answer. And if that question is, how strong is my product once it's actually used, GC gives you the clear, direct answer with less complexity and fewer steps. This is what it comes down to. GC and LC are both valuable tools. They just answer slightly different questions. GC gives you a direct readout of the active cannabinoids, THC and CBD, as they exist after decarboxylation. It's simple, fast, and closely aligned with how most products are actually consumed. That makes it a strong option for potency testing on flour, vapes, and decarboxylated extracts. LC, on the other hand, detects both acidic and neutral forms. And that's useful if you're working with raw materials, non-heated products, or need to meet specific regulatory requirements around THCA or CBDA. But it does add complexity. You'll need to interpret or calculate total potency from multiple values. That said, GC is more flexible than it used to be. If you want to detect both acidic and neutral forms using GC, it is possible, but it requires a bit more work. By chemically derivatizing the sample before analysis, the acidic cannabinoids are stabilized. This stops them from converting into their neutral forms during the heated step. So THCA and CBDA can be measured directly. It's not part of a standard GC workflow and not every lab will need it, but for those who do, it adds another option. So it's not about one method being better. It's about choosing the right approach for the type of product you're working with and the kind of information that you need. We'll cover more on cannabinoid testing methods in future videos. So if you thought this was helpful, hit like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.